uh, Conan worked for NBC and I worked for NBC. And so we crossed paths a number of times. We lived in the same neighborhood. He's, you know, uh, uh, he's so very talented. He's, in, he's just, and I'm sure you, you know this and people know this, but. Oh, I was on Conan before. <laughs> yeah. He's so quick. Yeah, he's yeah. funny. He's quick. He's Harvard educated. He's like, he's, he's just, he's humble. He's got all those incredible things together. And so he understood when I had done his show before, I was like, I don't like talking about me. And so he or we would come up with some kind of gag or some kind of prank that I pulled on the show. We, and he would air it. At one point we did, I showed him how to browse like a craft service table. That was a segment that we did. Ended up with somebody getting shot. I can't remember. <laughs> but, but, you know, he was like, you want to do comedy? Let's do comedy. Like he was game for it. That's it was, cool. It was incredible. You know, I, so, I, yeah, go ahead. We were doing that thing and uh, we were going to promote the show and I'm ready to go. And then there's the knock on the door. And I think it's the segment producer, as you know, that's the person who comes in and goes like, Hey, Michael, so remember, we're just going to talk about this, 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 and going to walk you out to the stage. And there's a knock on the door. And I think it's the segment producer, but it's Michael Roush, the showrunner. And uh, Michael goes, uh, Michael goes, so they pulled us. I'll never forget the intonation. I'll never forget the words verbatim. He goes, so they pulled us. And we stare at each other. We're in the green room staring, staring at each other. And then he kind of closes the door. And we're kind of looking at each other. And, then, <sighs> and it's a knock. And literally, I'm supposed to go, you know. And, and this time, it's not the segment producer. It's Conan. And Conan goes, I just heard. And I'm like, yeah. And he says, and this is like a, one of those like action movies where it's like 30, 29, 28. And he's like, I totally get it if you, you don't want to go on, uh, but you're a double and I got nothing else. A double means like, we're going to do a thing. We're going to go to commercial break and then we're going to come back, come to back and I'm going to talk to you again. I've never been a double. I'm a single. Get and, out. Uh, get out. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, no, I'll go. And he's okay, good. And then they're rushing us out there and it's like, five, four. And he's Jesus. like, can you talk about what just happened? I was like, uh, better not. I don't know what I would say. That might be really, really bad. He's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. And literally he's like, Two and Conan's there's like, hey, welcome back. And he's like, hey, everybody. He's like, I'm here with Tom Gavin. So you bike, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he like, uh, and he goes, and literally, the thing just sails by right. because he's so funny and he's so quick, and nobody would ever have known. And then that summer I was doing Urine Town. He's like, hey, come back on the show. And he's like, now can we talk about it? And I'm like, yeah, now we can talk about it. Wow. So on that thing, it was the last time Tom was here. We see that's he, perfect. He told, he told the story, and people in the audience were like, oh, oh yeah, that's how I was. because he was like, That's Hollywood, you know. And yet, even though it's like the most Hollywood kind of bad, bad Hollywood right. story I have, there's no in, intent, like I say, there's no intent of evil behind it. How, how, how many was, seasons did you do? That was our third episode, just three episodes in. Yep, and what was it called? Love Monkey. Well, I mean, that's just effed. Three episodes. How do you know anything? Well, did you ever hear about you, Seinfeld? You give things a chance. This is the thing, though. I remember a friend of mine did a show called, like, uh, I had two friends, and they both did shows that were like on, and Love Monkey was the same thing. It was on every, so I live in New York. It was on every bus, every taxi cab. And it was like, they loved it. We shot a full season. And it, as you know, but maybe people who are listening don't know, they sh we shoot so many episodes before we ever air them. And so for a while, the only, um, the only barometer you have is, is it good when it lands on your desk? And so, you know, I think that show, um, you know, that, I think that, that show we were, let me put it this way. I think we were, we were finding our way, but the, there was something ephemeral about, Judy Greer was in the cast. Jason, Jason Priestley, Chris Wheel, Lawrence Tate. Um, there were there was all such there were such talented human beings in, in that show that there was something ephemeral that translated from that to the screen, and we were finding out how to capture it. And I think the the reaction from the network was like, "This is great," you know. I think they really did enjoy it. It was an hour long. That's trouble one about. Um, an A&R music guy in New York City. 
So it wasn't blood and semen for your hour long. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like murder. It was just like, you know, it was, it was human drama. And I think that's a big problem on a big network. And again, like I say, not to offer excuses, but that's an hour of time. And if you can put CSI on and double the numbers, you're probably going to do that. But they were taking a shot with trying to make the network a little younger, a little hipper, a little New York cool, a little A&R, all that kind of stuff. Some, 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 a little bit of sex, a little bit of that kind of stuff. And so you can't blame them for taking a foray to try and be more competitive with the cool factor that at the time NBC and Fox and those. Sure. Those they, yeah, had. I get. It. Yeah. So they were doing that. But then what's interesting is um, Emily, the reasons why not. And then the Michael Malley show had happened just prior to that. And what's interesting is they were plastered on every bus as well. And you'll probably remember this because oh, yeah. you were doing stuff at the shows. time. They were like the new big thing. Yep. And the, the amount of money that got sunk into, you know, the advertising budget was, was astounding. And up until that, those moments in my experience, anyway, bridging both the, you know, the analog and the digital of all this kind of stuff, there was a, there was a thing where like, if you put that, uh, much money into promotion, then you had to go with the show. And so famously shows like Cheers and Seinfeld and Friends that didn't perform well, but had been promoted. They're like, look, we can't just yank it off the air. Why? Because we'll look silly. <laughs> and so they gave them enough time and they had champions, Tartikoff and so on, who were like, no, this thing is good. Right. I, I put it on my desk. I did the litmus test. The barometer was it showed up on my desk and it looks good. So we're going to stay with it for a little bit. But with Michael Malley and with Emily's Reasons Why Not, when they didn't perform numbers-wise to what they'd hoped they would get because of promotion, they took them off the air immediately. I think it was like one episode or two episodes at the time, and there was no penalty. Right. There was no backlash penalty to the networks. And I think that became, uh, oh, that's an MO then. If we can take them off and put it on CSI and nobody's going to, there's not going to be any backlash, then that's just what we're going to do. 